Welcome, everyone. Uh, we got our forum starting out tonight with uh, Chris, who has already been entertaining a few questions as is. So welcome, Chris. Um, I'll let you take it away. So uh, thank you for including me. Um, my name is Chris Newton, N6FR. Um, I am a member of the W6TRW uh, Radio Club, a uh, long-standing club here, started with TRW Company, um, and uh, pretty active. So this briefing uh, came about through my personal experience um, uh, last year, uh, getting my Amateur Extra uh, license. And uh, uh, it was such an interesting experience and new to so many people out here that I put this little briefing together and presented it to my club. And I guess Harry uh, found it <laughs> and or someone did and, and suggested that maybe it would be of interest to you guys. So I appreciate the opportunity. I've, it, it's really kind of a summary. I, I'm going to gather, uh, you know, at least everybody that I've seen tonight here is pretty senior, been around a while, licensed, maybe even, you know, uh, don't know exactly what the mix of people is. So we can go as fast or as slow as, as you want um, uh, on this. So it's, it's it's kind of a summary view. So, uh, you know, bottom line up front, you know, online testing is here. It works really well. It's very convenient. Um, it's robust. Uh, they've got it down to quite a science. Uh, and good execution. And of course it's COVID safe, which is why it was created in the first place. Um, so I was just really impressed with it. Um, and so I just thought I would document some of my experiences and, and uh, uh, see if, if people were unfamiliar or at least maybe hesitant about wondering what it was uh, and, uh, and, and how, to, how, how it's different from the traditional uh, licensing and testing methods. So, um, but at a glance, you know, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, of course, first step in all of this is studying for the test until you're ready to pass. That's really the hard part of, of all of this, always has been. Um, uh, you can take more than one test at a time, like you can in-person testing um, uh, if, you're, if you're ready to do that. Um, the second step, of course, once you're ready is to go get an online register for an online session now that's done through a website called hamstudy.org and uh th these slides will be available to you and and the, their links in here to all this um, if, if you want it um but for those of you not familiar uh, hamstudy.org i actually wasn't familiar with them at all um but stumbled across them um uh, well you know while researching this uh, it's a pretty good website, uh, all about dedicated to licensing and getting getting amateurs licensed. Lots of resources there, including this uh, fairly detailed database of sessions being offered uh, by most, if not all, of the VECs, um, uh, the volunteer examiner coordinator uh, groups that manage licensing or testing. Um, and so it's a one-stop place to go and find your place to sign up. So you, and I'll go into more detail in each of these steps, but just overall, so you go there, you uh, sign up for a, a, a session, um, you pay a nominal fee, um, usually five, 10, $15 for a session, something like that. Uh, then you're gonna get a bunch of emails from them about how this is going to happen. <laughs> and uh, they're very detailed. Um, and they have a lot of information, might look a little overwhelming at first, uh, but they want to make sure that everybody, when they come to the test, that you're ready, you know what to expect, and they do a good job of explaining uh, the rules. Um, and part of that really is understanding how the volunteer examiners are ensuring that even though they're doing this remotely, you're not in the same room with them, how are they ensuring that the testing process is, is secure, uh, and, uh, you know, meeting the standards that they've always had for in-person testing. So um, you read through that, um, and uh, then it's really a question of showing up. Um, when I took this test, and this was back in late October, uh, early November, they'd only been at this about six months. They started in April or thereabouts, 
you know, when the pandemic hit, started to think about how to do this. Um, they came a long way, in my opinion, in that short period of time to, to, to get up and running. Um, but they were still working some things out. Um, and demand is very high. Uh, there, as you see, if you go to hamstudy.org, you'll see that there are tests, opportunities every day um, across the country um, by, from one VEC or another. And, but even so, there seems to be a lot of demand, or at least there was back in November. And um, so you did have to wait a bit. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Then, of course, once you when it finally is your turn, you essentially sit down in sort of a virtual room, a separate room with, with three VEs, like uh, you would really in, in an exam situation, uh, in-person exam, uh, take the test, they monitor it. Uh, when you pass, because of course you will, because you're ready, uh, then you sign documents. It's Everything's done online. It's another thing that I think is a, a big advantage to this approach and why I think uh, this will this will continue to be used long after COVID's uh, uh, history. Um, anyway, uh, everything's online and, uh, you know, then celebrate uh, your new, new license. Um, so a little more detail then on each of those steps. Uh, so this is the HAM study website. Uh, it is that clearinghouse, as I said. Um, you can filter by your zip code or you can just look at the entire list. It's nominally sorted by date. So it's your current day going forward. And uh, you just scroll down through that list and um, you know, find a testing session. Now you do need to be careful. Um, they're all over the country. And so they're in different time zones. You need to be mindful of, of the time zone. Um, uh, you know, when you're selecting it, if, if you're not uh, in the same time zone that they're offering or wherever they're located. Uh, I, uh, I elected to use the Greater Los Angeles Amateur Radio Group, BEC, kind of a mouthful there. But uh, in fact, they were the ones that I first stumbled across when I was looking for online testing. Um, they, and they're a great group. I'm, I'm not affiliated with any of these groups or any of these websites, but so this is just my personal experience. Um, but uh, I was really impressed with them. They are a, a group, they are not a radio club. They're just a VEC. That's all they do is, is testing. And, uh, and they've jumped on this this online uh, approach, and uh, so I signed up with them. Advantage for me, of course, is they're local, so all of, most of the courses they list or test sessions that they list uh, are in the you know uh, Pacific time zone. So it's pretty easy. Although I noticed, I looked last night, they offer uh, sessions specifically uh, oriented for times that are convenient for Central. Uh, time and uh, East Coast time. So, um, you know, if you were looking for someone, I could I could recommend them. I guess just because I, I had a good experience there, and they probably have a session uh, that would work for you. Um, like I said, demand is high. You might find, like you notice here on this snapshot, uh, you can pretty much guarantee that the sessions that are only a day or two or three out are probably full, um, but. Uh, I think I found one that was like four or five days out because there's so many opportunities. You don't have to look too far in the future. Um, if you find one and they will show how many slots they have left in each particular slot or in each particular day uh, or session. And um, so you just uh, click on that, sign up. There, the, the, the GLARC group, they only charge $10. So you can see there's some there that are charging 14, 15, maybe more for a session. Uh, but uh, Greater LA does uh, $10, and I think it's $5 for youth um, uh, applicants. So there's lots of options to choose from, not too hard to find one. Um, I guess I've kind of covered this. They, that's all they do is, is VEC testing uh, as a VEC, and um, there's lots of information on the WHERE website, so if, if you're interested in them, Check out their website. A lot of it duplicates what's on what's on the uh, St Ham Study Org site. Uh, but the nice thing, if you do go with them, they have a filtered list of the Ham Study list that is just theirs. So that, that's kind of nice if, if you decide to kind of uh, uh, one stop shop there, just see the the ones that they're offering. Um, but you still end up uh, 
registering through hamstudy.org, uh, connected through their website. Like I said, they're all ten dollars, five dollars for for the uh, um, for youth. Uh, as I said, for that ten dollars, you can take more than one exam, just like you can in person. You know, if you pass one uh, and you're ready to pass another one, you can do that at the same time. I don't think it costs any more, but of course, they want to know that ahead of time for planning purposes if you intend to do that. Um, uh, so, you know, preparing for the exam is really the part that to me was the biggest change. Um, uh, not so much getting ready to take the test, but actually preparing for the exam experience. So, like I said, make sure you read the detailed emails. Uh, everything is in there. Um, and then number two, meet the technical requirements. Um, I'm going to guess for most people now, especially people on the phone here, if, if you're here, you already have pretty much everything you need, which is a Zoom, Zoom setup. Um, and so you're probably set on the technical side uh, already at this point. Or, um, and then the other part is this environment, what I just call the environment requirements. This is all about um, being ready to show the examiners that, that you have a, uh, a proper testing location, uh, that you don't have any material access uh, that you shouldn't, uh, et cetera. They want to make sure it's a clean and secure environment. Uh, they also want to, they recommend that it be quiet, that our, people aren't going to be coming and going, you know, there's not other things going on in the room, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that, that's their big thing is to make sure that the test when it's taken is taken legitimately. Um, and like in a regular in-person test, three VEs will be monitoring you from their own separate locations. Um, uh, during throughout the whole testing process. Um, and they'll walk you through it. They, the guys that I worked with um, were very, very professional, uh, very uh, considerate. Um, they did want to, you know, they wanted to know what they wanted to know, but as soon as you could demonstrate that, they were, they were good with it. And the whole test for me probably took less than half an hour. Yeah, uh, the setup and, uh, and the actual taking of the test. Uh, and it's all done online, as I said, so no need for paper verification. They will have already validated any existing licenses that you already have. They will look them up directly in the, in the ULS. Um, uh, and uh, the only thing you do have to bring is a photo ID, uh, and you'll show them on the camera and hold up your photo ID uh, that you are who you say you are. Um, and, uh, but then everything else is done online, including the, the paperwork uh, once you pass, that's all done there. Chris, yeah. uh, if, if, if say there's 10 guys registered for a class, <clears throat> is it, do they have to do this, this room check and, and uh, ID verification for all 10 and you sit and wait, or do you have three guys dedicated to you and different Zoom links for others or what? Yeah. So. Uh, well, let's see. So, um, if I think that my experience was just, you know, I'm testing from my location and there were, you know, when I dialed in, there were 30, 40 people, you know, in the session of waiting, kind of a waiting room. Uh, and in fact, it took quite a while. I mean, I probably spent two hours online actually waiting for my actual test session. Um, they made it they made it interesting, uh, at least. It was was enjoyable. I mean, there was a lot of uh, banter back and forth between them, uh, and they were answering questions. They had a lot of people helping uh, make everybody feel comfortable. But when it came time for me to actually take my test, <clears throat> they sent me to another Zoom room right, virtual room, in which I was then talking to three specific VEs. Uh, I presume there were other VEs at the exact same time in other rooms testing other people. So they were interacting with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, me with the three of them, uh, separate from everybody else. And so I presume that I suppose if you were sharing a room with somebody, if people were in the same physical room and you wanted to do tests back to back, maybe you could, you would only have to do the site verification once. That's an interesting question. I, I don't know. Um, my sense was, you know, everybody there was calling from their own location. 
And uh, so, you know, everyone went through that process individually. Um, so but that's an interesting question um, to maybe ask the orgs that are doing that. Um, anyway, let's see. So what was my personal experience? Um, so like I said, I was there to take the extra exam. When I was there, there were people that were just, you know, brand new to ham radio. There were many of them, I think, were just getting their technician, several generals. Um, so, you know, broad spectrum. And um, mine was really full. And I understand from the talk that they were very, very busy. Maybe, and I, I only presume that they continue to be really busy. Uh, there were over 70 exams administered that one day uh, by that one VEC. Um, so they did a lot of juggling and they had worked out a lot of logistics. Like I said, they bring you into this waiting room. Um, they had hosts, other amateurs who were familiar with the process to answer questions and just banter in general about amateur radio, uh, kind of like we were doing before the meeting. And it was so it was interesting. Um, and then they they're in the background, of course, they've got the VEs running people through their tests and, and, and going as fast as they can to run as many people through as they can. Um, uh, like I said, when I went to the, the final room, there was there was I was introduced to three VEs and they walked me through the process. I had to confirm my identity, show them my driver's license. Um, and then and then they want a little tour of your space again to, to, to understand where you are and where you're taking this test. And so it was really helpful to have a camera that wasn't integrated with my computer, right? Like on a laptop or something. I could literally take the camera off and they wanted to see a 360 degree up and down and all around view of my space. Wanted to see there was no material out, I had a clean desk. You know, they, they literally they wanted to look at the ceiling to make sure, you know, I hadn't put crib notes up on the ceiling, I guess. <laughs> uh, who knows what they run into, I guess. But, uh, you know, they asked me to move a few things, but I'd already, because I'd read the emails, uh, I'd already knew kind of what was coming. Um, I had seen in the emails that, you know, some were saying, oh, you need to have two or three cameras. You need to have the camera that's right on you. And then you need a camera over here that kind of showing you and the environment around you. And, and that didn't turn out to be, and maybe some VECs do, do insist on that. These guys didn't. They were fine with the single camera as long as we could take a few minutes and I could show them the room with the camera. Uh, and uh, then we were off to go. So when it finally came time to take the test, of course, you're taking it online um, uh, right over the, the, the computer and they're seeing exactly what I'm seeing. And they're seeing all the marks I make um, as well as watching me over the camera. So um, take the test um, and it was, you know, just what you'd expect. Um, if you've done any practice testing, it's really exactly the same. Um, went through it, uh, reviewed my answers. And then when you're done, you just uh, say done, um, submit. And of course it instantly scores it and you know right away uh, how you did. And uh, um, then we all celebrate. <laughs> uh, uh, then they start the paperwork. And it's again, if they present then the forms, the FCC forms uh, that we would normally do on paper um, uh, in the, you know, in an in-person setup, um, that is all done online. In fact, even signing the thing. And if you've ever tried to write your signature with a mouse, uh, you know how ridiculous that looks, but, uh, that's good enough, <laughs> I gather. So, uh, they submit it and, uh, they told me that, that this was like on a Sunday afternoon, they told me, well, by tomorrow morning, Monday morning, you should see, you know, the, 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 the ULS records updated to show that you have, that you've passed and you know, have the new license. It turned out I, I got, I saw it within a few hours. So they, uh, they, they, they did a pretty good job, uh, you know, getting the data in there quickly. Um, so, you know, overall, I was just in, impressed with what they had done and they pulled all of this together in, in what, six months now. Um, when I don't think anybody had been th even thinking about doing this kind of thing before then. 
before you know this time last year. So I was pretty impressed with it. And, and uh, it may seem a little intimidating when you get this long email with all these requirements of your testing space, but they, uh, they made it really easy. Um, and like I said, I was online for, for quite a while, um, but uh, they made it reasonably enjoyable. I suppose if, if they don't have as much a backlog, you wouldn't spend as much time. It all depends on how many other people are in front of you in the queue. But uh, they, uh, it, it just it worked really well. Of course, it's nice to pass. You know, you feel good anyway. <laughs> uh, so I just listed some other resources here. I'm sure you guys uh, are probably familiar with most of this. Um, uh, you know, because I got some questions about, well, how did I study? Um, and what did I do? Um, so uh, I sort of augmented this with, with some info on that. I, obviously, there's lots and lots of testing resources out there, and everybody learns differently. And there's probably a method for everybody to figure out how to, how to learn the material. Um, I, I basically just focused on the, the, uh, the extra Q&A book. I found the ARL books pretty good. Um, the Q&A book is the complete test pool. Um, and then, of course, the companion license manual, which is a big, thick guide if you're not familiar. Lots and lots of technical material for all the backup, you know, all the theory and everything behind it. But between the two of those, that's that's what I studied um, to uh, to be ready for it. Um, and I also then for testing, I used the ARL's online practice tests. If you if you've ever never seen that, they have on the ARL site. You can go to a place called Exam Review, and um, it will generate. Uh, tests for any of the license classes um, whenever you want. doesn't cost anything. You have to register, but, but uh, then um, doesn't cost you anything. And I just kept going back in there and taking tests over and over and over again until I got to the point where I was passing at least 85% or better, um, you know, 80% of the time or 90% of the time. And I, so I felt like I knew the material well enough. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm guessing there's some extras already in this crowd, and so you know it's it's uh, there's uh, there's a lot of material um, to it. But uh, um, you know, the having done the exam reviews online, then when I sat down to actually take the test, it was just like I was doing another review because it was all online, just pretty much presented exactly the same way uh, that it is through the uh, exam review site. So, um, you know, so uh, I guess Harriet asked me, you know, what, what did I see as the differences between the online and the in-person testing? I think I've sort of described that all well at this point. I think it'd been a long time since I've done an in-person test before. So it might be, my info might be, comparison might be a little dated, but because um, I got my general back in 2010, I think, uh, or something like that. And, uh, but I thought you know, it's pretty similar, right? You, the preparation is pretty much the same. You still need to identify yourself. The difference most is, I think, are mostly improvements. The fact that all the verification and the paperwork is online. Um, the fact that the records are updated so quickly, um, uh, I think, is an improvement um, or a nice convenience. And uh, really, the difference is that it's, it's now up to you as the, as the applicant to provide uh, and to prove that you have a clean testing environment, whereas before you just you just showed up and they've already provided the, the clean environment uh, for you to take the test in. So, um, should, certainly the new process certainly shouldn't scare anybody away from taking, you know, get, getting a license or getting an upgrade. Um, it, it works pretty well. Questions? Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm thinking about taking the extra thing, but I've forgotten uh, how many questions were there and how many do you need to pass? Good questions. Yeah, the, the, the extra exam is 50 questions, right? Where the technician in general, I think is 35. So it's, uh, it's more questions, uh, but the percentage is still the same. I think you need a 73%. So you do the math, I think you can miss 13 out of the 50, uh, 12 or 13, um, and still pass. 
And uh, you know, that's one of the things one of the things that they mentioned in the in the waiting room was uh, uh, you know it's not necessary to to get a hundred percent. And in fact, some would say it's not even worthwhile to try. Right? Just uh, learn the material well enough. Don't worry about knowing everything. Just focus on enough, right, to get the the passing the passing grade. Um, so, hey, thank you, Chris. The uh, <clears throat> the turnaround uh, you mentioned a few hours, more or less. Uh, would that be the same for a new licensee, like a new tech? I think so. Uh -huh. You know, they, um, uh, yeah, because it, it goes through the same system. If you're familiar with the universal licensing mm -hmm. system, the ULS, um, it's always good to already have a, a, a record in there. Um, in the, and you can go to, to the ULS website and create an account. And with that, you get the FRN, right? The FCC registration number. Uh, and that FRN now is your unique ID for everything you transact with the FCC. So, um, I already had one because I had done the general. When right. I did the general, I had one, and uh, so I suppose if you're brand new tech, it would. I guess I would recommend that people uh, go to the ULS, get familiar with it, create an account. Doesn't cost anything. Get the FRN um, because then when you go and sign up for the test, um, they will be able to cross check you right away with with the database and say, oh, they're already in, FCC knows you, here's the FRN, and you're ready to go. Uh, I don't know that that's a requirement to actually have the FRN ahead of time for the, if you're just starting. I thought I read somewhere that you were supposed to have an FRN before you test, but I might- I would recommend it. I, yeah. Might be, yeah. I don't know if that's a requirement, but I, I think it makes it easier for them, especially since they're doing everything kind of remotely now. Um, if you're already in the system, it's going to make it easier for them. It seems, to be, it seems to me that uh, to uh, prevent cheating, you'd absolutely have to have an over-the-shoulder camera, not a camera built into the laptop, since otherwise uh, the test taker could just um, uh, bring up another window on the laptop uh, that has uh, cheat sheets on it. Yeah, so they... Um, that's a good point, but they are, they ask, I mean, you know, there's a certain amount of trust involved. Sure. You, you could, you could foil the system if, if you really wanted to, you know, you can and work at it, I think, but um, they, first of all, they say, if you have multiple monitors and many of us do, you know, please turn all your other monitors off and you show them that you have only one monitor on. Now, I suppose you could, after you've done that, go and turn it on and, and, and try and do something, you know, uh, that they don't notice, um, I suppose that's possible. Uh, but the monitor that you're working on, they see everything going on there. So if you brought something up and it popped up on the monitor that you are using, they're going to see that. Um, and in fact, I understand some of the testers want you to, to use an online, you know, desktop calculator for the math functions, if you, if, you know. Um, they, uh, Glark didn't insist on that. They let me use, I showed them, you know, I got this, I said, here's my calculator, right? Um, uh, no memories, uh, and so on and so forth. And they said, okay, that's fine. You can use that. Um, so, um, I, I guess it, it's really up to the VEs. Um, and, and I can't comment on what any of the other groups are doing. Uh, maybe their rules are slightly different. Um, but, uh, I was able to use a desktop calculator, and uh, you know they don't want they don't want you to you know once you've shown them the space they don't want you to get up and leave the room right and come back or have somebody else come through the room. I think that's the also the reason why they don't want people coming in and out. They feel like you know they've checked the room and then they want it to stay checked, right? <laughs> so. Uh, so Chris, you had asked if this was worthwhile. Um, I will let you know that I certainly think it was, and I've just ordered both the Q&A book and the uh, extra class manual, hoping to get my extra oh, excellent. sooner that's, than later. That's great. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to get it for a while. I suspect anybody who has a general probably looks at it 
and thinks about doing it for a while. I, I had originally planned to take the, uh, it had sort of been, uh, I'd started study back in 19. And, uh, and then at the end of 19, I sort of made it a new year's resolution. I said, okay, I'm going to finish the study. I'm going to get the extra right in 2020. <laughs> and I was pretty close to being ready. And then COVID happened, all the testing shut down. Uh, in the old world, I just would have gone to, you know, W6TRW runs a testing program every month um, <coughs> at my, my club that we have VEs, and I was just going to go, you know, take the test with them. Of course, that's all shut down. So that sort of put everything on hold and, and for indefinitely. And so then, you know, when I started hearing about remote testing, that's when I started to look into it again and sort of restarted it. So I was mostly ready. Uh, I just had to, I, I think I spent about another month once I knew that this was going to work, I said, okay, October, November, um, I'll be ready and pick the books up again and started testing, uh, uh, studying. Um, one little data point, if you're, if you're thinking about taking the test, um, like I said, we all, we all learn differently. So this may not work for everybody, but what I, what I did, um, probably like a lot of you, you probably know a lot of this stuff already. Uh, uh, and there's, there's just, pockets of information that you need to work on, right? I, I know a lot about digital electronics and computers and stuff, and, but I didn't know much about RF. So that was, you know, I spent a lot of time on RF and receivers and, and there's a lot of theory in that extra uh, um, test uh, and Smith charts and, you know, all, all of that uh, calculations um, to learn about. Um, so, if you're just filling in holes, I found that um, I would take tests. I would sort of sit down. I would go through the, like I said, the ARL exam review. I would take a, a 50 question test and I'd see how I did. And for all the ones I missed, <clears throat> I would write down the identifier for that question, right? If you're familiar, they're, they're broken down by, you know, section, subsection, sub subsection and, and number, right? Or, something like that. Um, and <clears throat> the test books are all organized around that sectioning hierarchy. So if I found that I had missed a question in this section, I would go back to the Q&A guide uh, and find that question. And then I would look at all of the questions in that same section or subsection, because I probably, it wasn't just that one I didn't, I missed that question because that was probably an area that I didn't have enough information knowledge in. So then I would go take, I would practice all of the questions in that section, for example. Um, and I found that really worked well because the only thing you can guarantee when you take this test, uh, the only thing you know for sure is that they are going to test you in all of these sections, right? It's 50 questions pulled at random out of a test pool of, I think, 400 or 500 total questions for the extra exam, for example. So you don't know what question you're going to get, but you know all the subject matter, you know all the sections. So by, by going back and looking at it from a section by section basis, I felt like I was building the confidence, you know, that didn't matter which specific question I got, I at least knew enough in that area to pass, right, to get that passing. Uh, I, it worked really well for me. I, I have to say, I, I, I peaked just right. I, I actually got my best score on test day. I, I only missed three. <laughs> so I was, I was very happy <laughs> uh, on, on test day. Um, so that, that, was, that was the process that I used. Um, Not exactly a question for you, but do you know if the ARRL books are available on disk? I don't know. Um, okay, I'll check it with them. Yeah, go to the go to. The, they're all in the ARL store. No, okay, go to go to the store. I don't think I saw them. You know, they have lots of other resources. They have online courses. They have mentoring programs. They've got a, a lot of other resources, um, and maybe they have them online or at least electronic form. I I don't know. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I used for studying hamexam.org and uh, it is very nicely organized that uh, it give, gives you questions, you give answers and for all the questions that you get wrong, actually you get them again. 
and uh, th those those questions which you pass, they show up from time to time. Just uh, just uh, reminder, but those that you did not uh, answer correctly, they pop up uh, quite often. So you have a chance to remember them. But what what uh, what program was that? Was that the ARRL? No, it's uh, hamexam.org. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah you, okay. you, you, you can register for free. It will track your progress and uh, will help you to get ready for the exam. Hey, I, I agree with uh, Jason. Uh, I uh, use that same method for, uh, for the two exams that I took. Unfortunately, once I got my general COVID hit, and now I'm having too much fun with the radio to study for the extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... So um, I just looked up online for the extra uh, manual, and it says, get a jump on your amateur radio license, upgrade with ARL license manuals. Now the manuals for the technician, general, and extra class licenses include a CD-ROM complete with extra with exam review software. Oh, thank so. you. There you go. All right. Well, um, I think uh, we probably should start moving into our – uh, official part of our meeting. So I just want to say, Chris, thank you so much for this. This was uh, really good here. Um, I'm definitely glad that the online testing is going well for everybody and actually working. So once again, thank you very much for. Uh, uh, you're very welcome. Thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity. Thank you for coming out and joining us this evening. So. Yeah.